Welcome to the Hershey Podcast. I'm Brandon. And January. And today we get to have a special guest on, Dr. Cade Copeland. How are you? I'm awesome, you guys. Thanks for having me. How are you? I, we're doing great. I'm doing really, awesome. Yeah, I'm really excited today. We haven't had a guest in a while. Most of our guests have actually been our children. <laughs> yeah. So it's nice yeah. to have a, a guest on the podcast today, and especially with what we're going to be discussing today. So before we get started, Dr. Kate, tell us a little bit about yourself, what kind of doctor you are, where you are, and what it is you're doing in your little corner of the world. Well, I'm a, I'm a husband. I've been married for 13 years to my beautiful wife, Kristen. I'm a father of four little ones. I've got the easy job hanging out with you guys today. So again, <laughs> thanks for having me. My poor wife is at home. Our, our oldest is five and a half. Oh, we've wow. got a three-year-old, a two-year-old, and we've got a two-month-old. So, oh, my goodness. Uh, so Pretty crazy. Um, and then I've been a chiropractor down in Naples, Florida um, for nine years. Awesome. Well, you are in good company because Brandon is also a chiropractor. So Yes, indeed. We've got some chiropractic yes. family going on today. Oh, so do we need to give a disclaimer to the listeners then or before we like really get started, Brandon? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Everybody knows what they're getting themselves into at this point, right? Yeah. Well, I think for the most part, people know I'm a chiropractor and yeah. I have some pretty opinionated health beliefs so that <laughs> just, probably comes with the territory just a little bit and I, I i feel like i want to send your wife a, a coffee gift card after this i mean two months postpartum and f- f- four little ones five and under is that correct five and under yeah, yeah we've been incredible. there she that's, is incredible i'm so blessed to have her that's amazing well, and, and cbd has actually been a big part of our story which i know that we're going to jump into and talk a little bit today, yeah but, well uh, let's jump into that so we are going to be talking about cbd today if, if those of you that follow me you saw a few weeks or a few months ago that i posted an open discussion about cbd oil and cbd products for health and just asking who uses it, how you use it, what your experience has been. And almost 600 comments later, it was quite the discussion. And I haven't really talked about it since then. I haven't had anyone that I've wanted to discuss it with. And that is until Ryan, who works with Dr. Cade, came to me to tell me about your company. Rooted Apothecary. Rooted Apothecary. Thank you. I'm saying so many different names. Rooted Apothecary. And I was really interested, A, because you're a chiropractor. So, of course, that always gets me to look at something a little closer because we're a chiropractic family. And B, both you and Ryan have families and use CBD oil for yourselves and with your families. And that really piqued my interest. So I want to talk a little bit more about that today. But let's just start at the basics. So tell us a little bit about rooted apothecary and why you started it and what makes you a little bit different well ryan is in the other room um so you guys are stuck with me today but um you know it started um taking care of ryan and his family in the chiropractic office and you know um i pride myself on trying to give our patients um trying to help them grow their their wellness toolbox if you will you know from eating healthy to of course chiropractic care to rest and different supplements and you know over the years just like yourself we had so many people trying to open up the conversation on CBD and for me it was always kind of almost too good to be true you know you hear so many stories from depression and anxiety and epilepsy and seizure and all these different things I was very skeptical and I was I I love learning but it was a kind of a roadblock for me for a little bit so I didn't look into it and when I finally did look into it I just was amazed. I was amazed. And still, after doing this for however many years, you know, it still blows me away that we have mm-hmm. receptors for our body just littered all over every system. Um, it's, it's amazing to me. So how did it, how did it start? It started, um, after I learned about it, I knew I had to get involved and make that a basic recommendations for my patients. Mm-hmm. And I struggled trying to find a company and ingredients and growing process that I could trust. Mm. And, um, so that just kind of opened up the door and Ryan was in the office one day and, and saying, well, I, you know, I just spent a hundred dollars on a CBD product at the health food store down the road. And that would have been a lot easier for me to buy it right here at your office. Why is your Why is your face not on a CBD? Why is your name not on a CBD you know bottle yet? Mm-hmm. And I dismissed it so fast. I said, I have I don't have the manpower for that, Ryan. I mm-hmm. said, Give me a hug. I'll see you, I'll see you next week for your appointment. <laughs> and um, he challenged me to to look into it deeper. And history history was there. That's awesome. So he's a mover and a shaker, huh? He is a get it done kind of guy, I like and I that. love it. Yeah, it's it's nice. It's nice for those of us that are like, oh well, you know, I've got all this going on. No, let's let's do this. So that's 
That is awesome. That and, is awesome. And I can say, so I've been asked a lot if I use CBD oil since I made that post, and I do. Uh, I use it, well, for everyday health, which we'll talk about that in a little bit. And then also, I started using it because of anxiety and depression, actually both. And it was really, really bad. And I just needed something. And I've seen so many people talk about it and how it's legal, how it's safe, how it can really help your body. So uh, I looked into different brands. I went with probably one of the most popular brands. It felt safer. And it was sold in a nutrition shop in Scottsdale, Arizona. So I figured if this is sold in a nutrition shop in Scottsdale, Arizona, then it's probably okay, you know. Um, But like you said, I've looked into a lot of companies and I'm like, who do I trust? Who do I trust, especially if I, you know, want to use this to benefit my entire family and our overall health? And that's kind of scary as a parent, you know, if you're looking into something that isn't very well known, or there's a lot of misconceptions around it and using that. And so when you started Rooted Apothecary, what did you do? Or what can you share with our people who are listening um, to ensure that it's safe and effective for not just the parents or adults listening, but the entire family? So that's a big question. And Mm -hmm. I think that's an awesome place to start. So again, I've been in practice for nine years. And when we start talking about food with people, it's such a basic thing to talk about. And you talk about water, you talk about personal care products, you know, each one of those things have their own set of rules to dive into and to know if that product is safe when you put it on your skin or when you put it into your body or when you give it to anybody in your family. And so if you can take some of that knowledge of, you know, looking at the front of the bottle, knowing that it's meant to sell it to you, these bright, shiny things, these marketing terms are meant to sell it to you. And when you can turn around and look at the ingredients on the back of that product, you can start to understand, okay, well, I I guess I know it really is in here. Um, So we took a lot of those ideas, um, but there was a lot for us to learn. I mean, you know, you have to think about soil rotation and the health of the soil and you have to have, um, you know, the proper processing techniques to get it from what nature has grown into the bottle in its most pure source. Mm-hmm. It's got to be shipped correctly. So we wanted to make sure that everything, you know, was heat controlled and it was in a glass container. Um, it, there's just, there's so much to think about. So it's been a huge learning process. We've, mm-hmm. um, I've grown professionally a lot from that and been able to speak to patients more accurately and instead of, you know, just maybe kind of thinking what's good, but now confident and what knowing the difference between something that's good and something that's great. Right. That's amazing. That's wonderful. So can you tell us a little bit about how CBD actually interacts with the body? Yeah, that's where it, that's where it gets really fun. Okay. So He's smiling let's, now. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's go through the whole process. So um, should we just pretend like we're starting from square one for somebody that is learning about this for the first time? Yes, please. Yes? Okay, yes. cool. So um, every single person that we meet, every single person we talk to, every person on this planet has an endocannabinoid system. Everybody does, no matter their age, no matter their health, if they're in pain or if they have anxiety, if they're, everybody has one. And so starting from that, we know that each person has receptors for cannabidiol in their body. Mm-hmm. They have it in their brain, they have it in their liver, they have it in their GI tract, they have it on white blood cells. They have it literally in every system in the body. Mm. Now, going through school, Brandon, did you, you know, we learned about the nervous system. We learned about the cardiovascular system. But in school, I didn't, I didn't learn about the endocannabinoid system, did you? Nor did I. <laughs> it's wild, isn't yeah, it? Wow. Yeah, that, that was never once even mentioned, I think, in the entire time I was in school. Wow. So we both graduated in 2009, correct? Right. Correct. And uh, so they said that the endocannabinoid system, you know, was found in the in the 90s. So it's a relatively new thing. You know, I think we learned about the heart and the lungs a long time before that, right? But yeah, <laughs> so the yeah. endocannabinoid <laughs> is relatively new. Um, but you know, the the way that it intimately interacts with the, all the other systems is just mind blowing. So starting with that basic foundation, um, we know that we we get the compound cannabidiol from either our body either makes it, which is called an endogenous cannabidiol or we get it from exogenous sources outside the body and um, so when those two sources or I'm sorry when those two compounds come in the body has those it interacts again with those receptors to do different things in different areas very cool 
That's amazing. It's like we're learning a whole other system in our body that we're not really taught about anywhere. And the discussion of CBD is teaching us so much more about our body than than we even knew about. And I'm sorry, but I'm sitting here thinking about our student loan debt. And I cannot believe <laughs> that this did not even come up in your education. <laughs> well, then you got to think 10 years ago, you know, this was all still very much yes. taboo. Yes. So well, I, uh, I might have a bone to pick with someone about that later. <laughs> yeah, things are things are definitely changing fast, aren't they? Yeah, oh, yeah. very. You know, Such a rapid rate. Become. But again, you know, now I guess maybe in the age of the internet, you know, we can't hide mm. these things. People exactly. are constantly searching, and the truth gets out. But I think just starting with the idea that everybody has this system in their body. You know, mm-hmm. lets us know that, okay, maybe it's more important than just using this as like a medication, right? Where we have a problem and we need to take it. Right. You know, what if we could help that system function at its best? What doors does that open up? You know, again, are we just nourishing that endocannabinoid system or does helping that system function better, again, help the other ones? And, mm-hmm. you know, as more research comes out, it's amazing what this stuff can do. Well, you kind of answer my next question, which is when to take CBD. So I know that many people like myself, we don't, we, like you said, it's changing so fast. So all of a sudden there's all this information about CBD and all these different CBD companies popping up. And it's like, well, if this can help me with, you know, depression or anxiety or mental health or, or, you know, like you said, seizures, other things, then I guess I'll try it. But what you're saying is, is don't wait until you have something like that that you are needing it for but to use it more on an everyday basis for an overall healthy system is that what i'm picking up i mean if we took that somewhere else we wouldn't you know start brushing our teeth when we had a problem right. you know we wouldn't start eating healthy when we had a problem mm. you know we wouldn't start exercising when we had a problem. i mean the smartest thing is to help the body function at its best mm. and when we look at the system it's the exact same way it's another one of those lifestyle things mm-hmm. and um you know i I, I think I, I've got a slide here in front of me, so I want to share some of this, this information. I mean, if we just look at the brain, the receptors in the brain, there are receptors in the hippocampus that help with memory. Mm-hmm. There's receptors in the hypothalamus that play around with appetite. There's receptors in the HPA, the hypothalamus pituitary axis, which actually modulates cortisol production and our body's response to stress. There's receptors in the limbic system, which help with anxiety. There's receptors in the basal ganglion for sleep. There's receptors in the microglial cells in the brain, which modulate the immune response, I'm sorry, the inflammatory response in the brain. Mm. I mean, if we just stop there and just focus on brain health, we don't talk about anything else. There's just hours and hours worth of, you know, things to talk about, both for prevention and for crisis Mm. mode. That's fascinating. It is fascinating. What do you think about that? Oh, I I think it's, it's phenomenal. And you saying all those uh, different systems totally reminds me of all the neurology classes that we had in school. <laughs> and it, it's, it just, it's mind blowing, not only what we do know, but then also what we don't know mm. still. Mm-hmm. And well said. Yeah. And, and with just the research you mentioned in the nineties with the CBD, that's proof positive right there. And how much more are we going to learn in the next? And I think, you know, when you hear months, people speak on the topic, you know, again, with the little bit that we know, I think a lot of research are, are keen to say what you just said. You know, we still have so much more to learn on this. But mm-hmm. again, with that system being in the body, it just it really opens up the door. You know, one of the founding things for our company was trying to change the conversation. You know, if we mm-hmm. if this research really is true, if this really is in our body, and these receptors really are there. Again, why are we pigeonholing into symptom care? Why are we playing the you know the take this for that kind of drill right. when again this it. it it's going to be even more powerful if we take it in a different direction. Well, one of my favorite things to do is to change the conversation. I mean, (laughs) I think I've started like five movements to change conversations. So I love that. That's something that I absolutely love about what you guys are doing is that, yes, you have this phenomenal, reputable company where it's authentic, where you're very transparent about the entire process, but deeper than that, you're trying to change the conversation to, to educate and to show people that the conversation surrounding this has not been complete. It has not been authentic. It has not been, you know, about change and about health in general, I think, actually. So I I have a question for you. And that is what what would you say, and I'm sure you've answered this before with your patients and, and customers, but what would you say to somebody who is nervous about 
adding CBD into their daily life for whatever reason, but they're nervous about it because of the misconceptions surrounding CBD in general. So what would you say to someone that, uh, that, that is a little scared or nervous about trying it? I think that's a good, I think that's a good question. And I think so many people are curious about it. And um, I don't, I don't get too many people saying that they're necessarily afraid, just maybe that they're skeptical or apprehensive. Okay. And as soon as you know, you start to look through some of that research and just say already what we've talked about, knowing that their body right there, whether they've taken it ever in their life before or not, you know, their body has the receptors, it's going to utilize that food, that plant, that plant medicine, it's going to take it in just like food and be able to utilize it for the good of the body. Mm -hmm. Um, And the body knows what to do. It's not something that's synthetic. Mother nature knows best. Mother -hmm. Mother nature created this plant and this compound to interact with their body. And so just giving them some peace on that, I think is huge so that they understand it better. Right. So kind of like with anything, if somebody's nervous about something or unsure about something, look into it, educate yourself, learn about it, right? I mean, I think that that I can extend that all the way back to, you know, when I started birth without fear, why do we have fears? Because we don't maybe know a lot about it, we need to learn more about it, we need to have the discussion about it, we need to talk to people who are knowledgeable in that area. So I think that's a, that's a really good answer is, you know, looking into it more and, and re- researching about it, about your body and about how CBD is our, well, like you said, we already have all these receptors in our body. You know, that is something I did not know until just recently. And I felt kind of, I don't know, duped almost like why, (laughs) why don't I have this information? And, you know, like Brandon went all through chiropractic school. He's been a chiropractor since 2009. We are huge into natural health. You know, our children, our oldest is 15. We have six kids. They've never once had an antibiotic. And it's not because we're anti-medicine at all. We just, there's, like you said, Mother Nature provides so much. And through chiropractic care and natural remedies, you know, we just, their body has been able to heal itself. Again, if it was absolutely necessary, we will use, I mean, medical care. I think it all plays hand in hand. And I feel like if we can all work together, right? Like it's everything has its place. It's amazing. But then I learn about there's this whole other system in the body I didn't even know about. (laughs) And I feel like I didn't even know my whole body. (laughs) You know, I feel like I'm learning more about my whole body. So I don't know if anyone else listening is going to feel that way. But I think that's totally rad, you know, to 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 learn this knowledge that this is, this is already a system within our body. And I want to do whatever I can to keep and get that healthy. Wow. You know, I'm going to just steal your words, and I think it's totally rad, too. I, I think it's totally <laughs> rad, too. <Yeah. laughs> it, uh, you know, there's a time and a place for everything, like you said, but, mm-hmm. you know, maybe due to fear, maybe due to marketing, maybe due to who knows what, um, but that line has definitely gotten blurred of, mm-hmm. you know, when people feel comfortable, you know, using natural medicine or natural remedies, right. and then using, you know, the, the synthetic medications. And, um, you know, I think it's gotten to that point, you know, one of the questions I love to ask patients when they walk in the door is, um, how many Walgreens and how many CVSs did you pass by on the way here? And everybody, you know, they, they disappointingly giggle at that because they, 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 they know that <laughs> it's kind of the way that things are, but right. And they know it's wrong. Right. You know, they know that it doesn't have to be that way. And so when we get to teach people and when we get to give them more options for their wellness toolbox, then that line doesn't necessarily become based on fear. It doesn't become blurry. That line becomes a little sharper of when you can use something that's natural and when you need to actually go to, thank God we've got medicine. Thank God there's times and places, right? For all of us, oh, yeah. we all when in our, that situation. When our oldest, thank God we have it. Yeah, absolutely. When our oldest was three months old, she stopped breathing. We called 911 and we took her to the hospital. I mean, you know, there's, there's absolutely, thank goodness. I mean, I've had three cesarean births that I do not regret at all. Like, absolutely. But there's so many things that we can do on a day to day basis to take care of ourselves. And if you're a parent and, you know, and this, this kind of goes beyond CBD, but um, it, it relates. If you're a parent, then you know what it's like to, you know, it be on the weekend or the middle of the night and your child isn't feeling well. You want to have, like you said, everything possible in your toolbox to help take care of yourself and your family, you know, during those times where we can't quite get that, that help that, you know, we might need. So can we just talk uh, real quick about just different uses for CBD that people might not think about? Maybe, you know, like we've brought up children a few times during or after pregnancy, postpartum, you mentioned that your wife is freshly postpartum with a two month old, that kind of thing. 
Oh, where do we start on this one? So let me just kind of run through and look at my notes here as I'm kind of thinking how I want to answer that. Okay, no um, one of my favorite things in the world is is being creative. You know, mm-hmm. it's taking the, the medical, scientific, you know, um, textbook approach to certain things, but then taking the artful approach of, of again, being creative, digging through that toolbox and, and, and giving people options. So um, maybe we should start with, um, maybe should we start with pregnant mommy? Maybe we can start. What, with, let's with, start there. Let's start with pregnancy. Um, so I know, of course, you know, for my wife, when we went through our first, um, you know, pregnancy, you know, there was a lot of unknown. There was a lot of fear going through that whole process of, you know, if this feeling is normal, if that feeling's normal, I'm, I'm waking up, I'm feeling crummy, I'm experiencing morning sickness. There was a lot of unknown. Am I, am I taking all the right things? Am I, you know, eating the right food? So um, CBD was a great tool in that case for us to um, help my wife physically with some of the aches and the pains. Mm-hmm. You know, CBD has the anti-inflammatory um, benefits and it also has analgesic benefits. Both of those, again, are going to help reduce pain um, as her body was changing from trimester one, two to three. Mm-hmm. Um, it also helped her mind. You know, again, we talked about the receptors in the brain. It helped drive a balance back to her brain. That's really what CBD does in the mm-hmm. brain. It acts as a neuromodulator. So mm-hmm. if someone is overexcited, it helps drive them back down to a normal, like a normal state. Mm-hmm. If somebody's on the low end of that spectrum, it helps drive their system back up to a normal state. Mm-hmm. Um, I always liken that to, you know, the, the gas pedal on a car and the brake on a car. Mm-hmm. You, you can't have them both on at the same time. It's counterintuitive. When one is on, the other is off. And again, CBD helps the body regulate, you know, when should I be, you know, um, in a fight or flight state? When should I be up? When should I be alert? When should I be stressing out about this? And when should I be able to rest and calm, digest, relax, and kind of, you know, digest through the the, the days, what happened through the day. Um, so CBD was really important there. Um, some creative uses, um, when my wife was pregnant, we used it on her belly to prevent stretch marks and for mm-hmm. her to, you know, just make sure that that belly was healthy. So we put some frankincense and some mm-hmm. shea butter, some coconut oil and some CBD. And of course we did belly massages and we got one of those little hand massagers, those light vibration hand massagers. Mm-hmm. And that actually helped us drive in and, you know, prevent some of the adhesions and the sticking points and the muscles on her tummy. Mm. That's so that really was cool. Fun. Yeah. That's really, really neat. That is cool. What a cool idea. All those things we learn about after I've had six kids. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like bummer but that's that's really really neat and I know we're talking about pregnancy but that kind that made me think about postpartum especially after cesarean with all the scar tissue and the adhesions like how wonderful that would have been to be able to do that right oh, if you're taking that internally mm-hmm. you know it's going to hit the spots that you just said the scar mm-hmm. tissue and to apply it topically with that vibration yeah. that's such a uh, it's just I don't know. Again, it's so much fun to come up with some of these recipes for mamas, mm-hmm. mamas to use, and it works so so amazingly well. Um, so another thing that we did was we created a recipe for um, to prevent tearing for my wife mm. um, through that process. So um, we applied some uh, use some olive oil and again some frankincense, some tea tree, and some CBD that she could use to prep. Um, the perineal area Mm -hmm. and um, again we did that as she was getting closer um, to crowning and amazing everything everything went well that's so more fun recipes and what we want to do those recipes aren't on the website yet we do want to make sure that they're up there so moms can start using and you know promote the diy um kind of thing i know i know there's a bit of a movement across the country with those types of things (laughs) right absolutely absolutely well and i know as a mom myself whatever help I can get, I will take. So I think it's wonderful to, you know, we, we need that. We need more of that. You know, we no longer live in that village mindset or even actual true physical dynamic. And, you know, especially postpartum, we, we don't have that village aspect a lot unless we create it in our community. So to be able to have more things for the tired, physically exhausted, mentally exhausted postpartum parent, like, I mean, I'll take it, you know, sign me up because, <laughs> you know, it is, we, we need that. We need whatever support we can get. So if this is something else that can support us in our healing and our health, all for it. That's wonderful. You mentioned you're going to put that up on your website before we move on into like postpartum and whatnot. What is your website? Our website for CBD is Rooted, or well, our company name again is Rooted Apothecary. Mm-hmm. And our website and our social handles are Rooted Apoth. Okay. So, so that's the website too. It up a little bit. So the website is rootedapoth.com. Yeah, rootedapoth.com. Okay. All right, great. Yeah. So I know people listening will be like, wait, I have to make note of that for when this episode is done to go check that out. Don't so worry. It will be in the show notes. It absolutely will. So, but moving <laughs> for easy access. 
So moving on into, you know, beyond pregnancy, what are some other creative ways that you have found in using CBD? One thing that I heard recently is, I, maybe we should have started here even before getting pregnant, um, is, you know, uh, cannabidiol, and um, I should say, and, and um, the endogenous cannabidiol, 2-AG, mm-hmm. is actually responsible for working in the, uter- in the uterus mm-hmm. to help the egg attached to the uterine wall. So help um, Which, so when you start fertility. thinking about fertility mm-hmm. issues, mm-hmm. and again, how this system is just interlinked into our body, it's amazing. You start, to, again, thinking about fertility issues and people that struggle, I mean, is it an endocannabinoid deficiency? Because we, we don't have this plant in our diet where, you know, ancestrally we did. It's right. so interesting to start thinking about this stuff. So, um, all right, let's jump to um, after pregnancy and nursing. This is a fun one. Oh, okay. um, 2-AG is fine. Again, 2-AG and anandamide, those are the two endogenous, um, you know, endocannabinoids okay. that our body makes, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. And 2-AG is found in high amounts in breast milk. Mm-hmm. And some research showed that when they tried to take the 2-AG out of the breast milk, that the baby was having a hard time actually latching mm. and getting the motivation to suck to bring the milk down. Mm-hmm. Wow. So again, That's if mom amazing. doesn't have the proper amounts of endocannabinoids or isn't getting, you know, again, mm-hmm. uh, phytocannabinoids into mm-hmm. the diet, what, what what's going to happen during nursing? Right. It is so wild to think about. Well, I'm just thinking about all the ways that can, that can affect nursing. Wow. Yeah. We you could know, have supply. used that information. I know that's amazing, and uh, I I did hear a few months ago a mama that I follow on Instagram shared that it's already in breast milk, and uh, that kind of it surprised me, but it didn't, because breast milk is literally magical gold. It's amazing, and you know changes for whatever the baby's needs are, and has healing properties, and so many different things. So, it it's only surprised me I hadn't heard it before. But once I heard it, I was like, well, that makes sense. <laughs> that of makes, course, it's in there. Yeah. Of course, it's yeah. in there. Right? That makes it sense. Is, it's amazing um, what what you mamas can do. You know, I, again, been married for thirteen years. I'm just in awe of my wife every single day. Um, but yes, again, it's in, in high amounts in the breast milk, um, along with all the antibodies and the immune system um, that you give to the baby. So it's it's incredible. Um, so speaking about that too, um, you know, again, when baby is sick, we've talked about you know, say if, say if baby's got a, a clogged um, tear duct in the eye. You know, you've heard so many times about putting breast milk in the mm-hmm. eye. And again, you know, going on a nursing vacation, if you will, when baby is sick. Well, again, you know, the endocannabinoids and the phytocannabinoids, um, there's receptors for those on the white blood cells in the body. Mm-hmm. And so those are a, an immune modulator. So we've all heard of autoimmune. So that's when the body, you know, overreacts to a certain situation or a completely underreacts to a given situation. Mm-hmm. Well, um, cannabidiol helps the body mount the proper defense if it's a viral or a bacterial or an autoimmune reaction. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> awesome stuff. I feel like I'm sitting through a master class right now. That's how I feel. <laughs> I think it's amazing. I, I really, I feel like, thank you for doing this. I know, I, I just want to say right now, thank you. Like, I feel like I'm sitting through this master class and all these questions. If I have all these questions about CBD, then I know so many more people do too. And I feel like I'm getting to truly understand how my body works, how this system within my body works, and then how, you know, CBD can help it. Well, I'm a, I'm a chiropractor and I'm learning as much as you are right now. I know, masterclass with Dr. Kate. (laughs) This is not, this is not stuff I, I knew before, so. Right. It's exciting. Well, it's incredible. It's incredibly sitting down, or you know, fun to be sitting down with you guys too and talking about all this stuff. But um, you know, when I opened up the door to this too, I I, I was just amazed, and it you know mm-hmm. gives you more confidence knowing that this is a safe substance to take because of how the body uses it. You know, mm-hmm. um, so let's see where do we where do we want to go where do we want to go next? Um, we talked a little bit about nursing. How about we talk a little bit about you know maybe sources of phytocannabinoids okay. and knowing you know again if you are going to be using it for conception if you're going to be using it during pregnancy or nursing, you know, I think a big thing for us was making sure that we're getting the right stuff into the body. Um, so maybe let's talk about some of those things and then we can do some more creative uses. Is that, is that's, that okay? Yeah, that's great. I, I, I feel like I kind of missed that one. Um, okay, so, no, um, there's something called, uh, isolate 
a CBD isolate, and then there's mm -hmm. something called full spectrum. And uh, what we really promote is, again, something called full spectrum, where we're honoring what Mother Nature has created. So it's kind of the difference between, you know, taking a, a synthetic, you know, isolated form of vitamin C versus the difference in the vitamin C that you're going to get from food. There's definitely a difference in how your body utilizes that, the benefits from it. So CBD is the same way. So an isolate is just taking the CBD compound out of the plant and putting that in versus full spectrum is you're taking the whole plant, the benefits, the enzymes, the terpenes, all of the phytocannabinoids on the full spectrum and using that so your body, again, it's mimicking taking the plant and eating the plant basically. Okay. So there's a huge difference. There's a huge difference in how different companies then make their CBD products is what you're saying. Yeah. Again, the two big ones, you know, there's different ways to process the plant and, um, and, and create that end product. But what you really want to look for is, you know, again, things like organically grown, non GMO full spectrum, again, is the best where you're going to be able to get the most medical benefit from the plant. Um, and be able to take less of that dose to, again, get what you want out of it. Where if you're taking an isolate, because it only has a, a, a fraction of what's in the plant, mm -hmm. you're going to have to take more of that to get the same thing. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. And that's really good to know, especially when people are researching, you know, CBD and, and its uses and which, which they want to get and whatnot. So I take it Rooted Apothecary is full spectrum. Absolutely, yeah. full spectrum. So we, we proudly say that, you know, we have uh, organically grown here in the United States and um, we use uh, CBD is in there and we third party test to make sure it is what we're saying it is and it is what our farmer says it is. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we, there is THC in there. And, you know, THC is kind of, I think, what a lot of folks are nervous and afraid about. But mm -hmm. we are proud to say that that's in the plant, again, because we're honoring Mother Nature. Mm -hmm. Now, it's below the 0.3%. That is, you know, again, that's the legal limit. Mm -hmm. Again, our third party you know labs will verify that for us which is also posted up on our website but when the cbd and the thc is in there this is this is wild too when you look at the neurology here thc actually magnifies the medical benefit of cbd mm -hmm. so when you strip that out again you're going to have to take more of the cbd to get the same benefit mm -hmm. um and when it's below point point three percent i guess some people are going to be worried about drug testing and you know maybe we should just say that right off the bat there's always going to be you know um, a possibility mm -hmm. but it's in low enough amounts that we can commonly say that that is highly 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 unlikely that it would ever test positive on there no, I'm glad that you addressed that because I know that was a big concern for me. I mean, I'm a mom of six. I don't use cannabis in any other way. It's, you know, because of that. And so um, when I was looking into CBD for health reasons, I was very nervous about that because I'm, as again, as a mom, I'm very careful about what I put into my body and what I do. You know, I don't, I've been sober actually for almost a year. I don't even drink alcohol anymore. So it was really, really important. Thank you. It was really important for me as a sober mom to make sure that I wasn't putting anything into my body that would affect my sobriety, but also affect something like that, right? Like, but at the same time, what you're saying makes perfect sense to me that having the small amount in there, it's the plant in its entirety, right? Like it's, so it makes sense to me that it's got to be in there a little bit. That's the full benefit of it. But I've been trying to get my grandmother to use CBD cream or something on her knees. She has really bad knees. And she's just so scared of what people will think. And I'm like, Nanny, you're not smoking a doobie. Like, this is not, like, <laughs> you know, and if you did, I wouldn't judge you. But, you know, you're not doing anything wrong. You're not doing anything even, like, illegal. Like, this is completely legal. It's a plant. It's good for you. But it's it's really hard for me to to express that to her with the misconceptions around it, which is why I really wanted to talk about this and change the conversation because people are scared to do something that's perfectly normal and healthy and good for you because of those misconceptions. So I'm really glad that you did address that. Well, I, it, that would be a fun conversation to have with grandma. Did she <laughs> end up taking it? Does she what? Did she end up using CBD? No, I, no, I bought it for her and she, cause she told me, she's like, okay, get it for me. So I bought it for her. And then my grandfather was like, no. And so I'm like, well, at least give it to me. So it goes to good use. <laughs> it did go to good use. So I think I've seen her pick up a cream. We were out one time and she put it back. So if I can get her something that just maybe even looks 
comfortable not I don't know what it is it's just it's that misconception again you know they're in business and they don't want they don't want they're worried about what other people think right so that well, it's fun. To, it's fun to think about how you know we really make decisions either based on logic, right? right? And we went through the logic aspect of this with the science and the research, right? But there's also such a strong emotional factor in this industry right now. There there's is. such a strong part. So one of the things that I like to share with with patients, and you know, shout out to the people that produce this documentary. The documentary is called The Sacred Plan, and okay. I don't know if either one of you have watched it. I haven't. But it is absolutely worth your time it's a docu-series that's available for free just type in the sacred plant documentary on on google okay and um wh- what i love about it is in the first episode I, I, I think there's maybe six or eight different episodes but um it goes into the political history of the plant of cannabis mm-hmm. and how before i you know in the in the early 1900s you know it was literally in every cannabis was in everybody's medicine cabinet it was in everybody's medicine cabinet. Wow. And physicians were regularly using that as, again, part of their mm-hmm. toolbox to help people get well from a variety of illnesses. Mm-hmm. And, again, there was political things and um, pharmaceutical right. things that happened that actually started to vilify that plant. Mm-hmm. And the American Medical Association, from my understanding, um, didn't uh, initially were against that. Mm-hmm. And um, it's just so wild to go through that. And you know that, again... There's been a lot of fear and there's been a lot of political reasons why people I still have such an emotional response to using It is CBD. an emotional response. I know that even as I educate myself and I know that CBD is completely legal and good for me, even I have to have a logical conversation with myself sometimes about it still, which is really interesting. Uh, but I think that the more we talk about it and, and, and like you mentioned earlier, We're living in a time now where, you know, social media might have a lot of drawbacks. It not might, it does, but it's also wonderful because it's an age where, like you said, you can't hide this information anymore. All this actual scientific research is being done and the the findings are so positive that now we have an avenue and a platform to share that and to change the conversation. So for that reason... I, I love this time that we're in social media, that we can sit here with you and have this podcast and talk about it and share that with other people, you know, who may not have anybody else to talk about it with in their in their everyday life, you know? Absolutely. Well, I was going to say, you know, it's kind of fun to play off that, that emotional side of things too. You know, we, we, we created our our motto, your rebelliously wholesome remedies to kind of play off the fun of that emotional mm-hmm. response and mm-hmm. the history that the plant has. And, you know, and I, I, it, it's just... It's going to be fun to see where this industry goes in the next couple of years. And if we're able to change the conversation and help people understand that, um, what the power that Mother Nature has put here. I mean, look at look at essential oils. I remember the right. first time that I heard about essential oils, I thought it was the silliest thing that I had ever heard right. because I didn't understand it. I, right. It was the silliest thing. It, I just couldn't believe it. And, you know, when you start digging a little bit deeper and science is now catching up with, you know, mm. these, these ancestral remedies. Right. You know, the chemical constituents in these plants respond and interact with the body and they do do something. They absolutely do do something. I feel like mother nature is like, I feel like mother nature is like nice of you to catch up bitch. Like with science, (laughs) you know, like Like mother nature's like, yeah, about time, you know, like, I mean, I've known this since the beginning of time. I mean, cause it's amazing. It really is. And isn't that beautiful when like mother nature, natural remedies can meet with science and it's a positive you know, yes. result. How awesome is that? So that's really, really cool. That well, we're that's that's where time. healthcare is going to go, right? I yeah, mean, for so absolutely. long, you know, the natural side of things in medicine butted heads. Yeah. But it really doesn't have to be that way. No. When we can put those two things together, that's where the power is. I joke about it with patients all the time. You know, I like to say that I think God has a sense of humor. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's a wonderful quote out there that says, you know, God has placed everything in nature that we need to be healthy, but it's up to us to find it. Mm-hmm. And it's just hidden in the craziest of crazy places. Right, <laughs> right. Absolutely. And we get to live in a time where the science and Mother Nature are coming together, where we can share it on these platforms, you know, and really start having autonomy over our bodies and our health. It's incredibly rewarding, especially as a parent to be able to take such incredible care of my children through all the seasons of their lives because we have so much available to us now. So anything, 
any research that comes up or anything, you know, else that's like, like, this is such a perfect example, you know, Mother Nature's like, I have this plant that will help, you know, all of these things in your body will help your body. And then all the research catches up to that. And I love it. I do feel like this is kind of pushing healthcare to say, oh, this is great. <laughs> you know, so I guess, I guess we'll use this now. This is wonderful. And I think that's fantastic. And I know that a lot of parents like myself, you know, for the last 15 years, I'm like, duh, you know, <laughs> like we've been, we've been taking care of our families this way for, you know, like you said, our ancestors did. And I think, you know, we're in a time where we're a lot of us are trying to tap into how our ancestors lived and, and how they took care of their families. And same thing with birth. Like I, I remember I just, I wanted to just squat and give birth to my baby without anybody telling me I couldn't do it because X, Y, Z, right. I just wanted to be able to just squat and push my baby out. And nobody believed in my ability to do that because I'm plus size I'm post dates I'm feedback. Like they found all these reasons why I couldn't. And so I did by myself, <laughs> you know, like I was just like, I'm just going to do this by myself and I'm going to squat and push this baby out. And I think that that goes into healthcare all the way across the board from children, teenagers, pregnancy, birth, postpartum, and even up into our care as we become older. I have spoken to so many women who are older that don't feel that their voice is heard in their care, you know? So to have all of these, all this knowledge and these conversations and these tools to take better care of ourselves, I am 1000% on board and all for it. I love the way that you put all that stuff. I, th I feel like we are living right now in a time where more than ever, people have the opportunity to take a step for themselves and take charge of their health and to be empowered. There's yes. no lack of information. Yes. And it's just up to somebody to get the right information and take that, that first step. Mm -hmm. You know, we have access to everything right now. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's communities like what you've created and a voice like what you're sharing with you right now um, and what you've created on your site to get it out to people so that they can feel confident that they're doing the right thing and that they're walking with somebody else and not by themselves. Absolutely. It's like we're creating our own villages, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Did you have something that you wanted to add or? I, I don't have much to add. You, you, you two <laughs> are, are killing it right now. So I'm just sitting here looking pretty. I think Brandon's just sitting here like, where's the CBD? <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. I'm like, I'm going to take some here when this is over. <laughs> no, I think this is, I, I think this is great. We're, we're kind of wrapping up on time here, Dr. Kate. So is there anything else that you wanted to share that we didn't have a chance to get to? Well, it's so tough because it's, it's, it's such a big topic. So let me see. Um, a couple things, you know, I know that we talked about the things to look for in CBD. And I actually learned in prepping for our talk today that the Journal of American Medical Association put out in 2017 that 71% of CBD products on the market when they were tested were different than what the manufacturer was saying was in them. Ooh. So we just want okay. to encourage everybody to make sure that you're doing your due diligence on mm -hmm. using this stuff, not just again for you, but if you decide to use it for your family. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that I'd like to put out there for any um, listeners or and you never know how aware, you know, who listens to a podcast, right? right. Um, is right now, I don't know of any test. You know, I get a lot of questions about dosing. I don't know of any test that would tell a, somebody exactly how much is the right dose for them. Mm -hmm. If there was a blood test out there that would say, well, you're deficient in this much, take this much CBD. Or mm -hmm. here, you've hit and you're in the optimal levels, now we just need to maintain it. Or even if you're too high mm -hmm. in your levels of this substance in your body. And if there is a test out there, to me, I think that's going to be the million dollar test mm -hmm. that will help us optimize that system. I just got the chills. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. Amazing. What a great thought. What a great, yes. I'm glad you put that out there. Well, there's a lot of people out there that are way, way, way smarter than, than me. So <laughs> I, I wonder if it's out there, but I haven't found it yet. But, you know, when people ask about dosing, I think that's something that really needs to be shared. And I also, Absolutely. you know, because this plant is food and the body looks at it as food, you know, we were always really encourage people to experiment. Um, mm -hmm. play around with the dosing, you know, try to get to where you want to be. And then of course it's all about maintaining it, but, um, let's get some confidence on the topic. Let's have fun with it. Let's keep it simple. You know, right. it is plant medicine at its absolute very best. So, um, you know, of course people can always learn more and 
on our next podcast, of course, that we do together. Yeah, absolutely. On the website. So I love I love that you said keep it simple. That's one of my most favorite things to say. Like people ask me, how do I go? How do I go vegan? Because I've been vegan for four years. And I'm like, you have to keep it simple or you're going to get overwhelmed. So same thing with this. I would tell I would tell you guys, you know, do some research on it. Find companies that have that third party testing like Rooted Apothecary and or just go to rootedapoth.com and check them out because, you know, if you do, if you a lot of us are overthinkers, you know, so you want, right, you want to do the research and you want to make an informed decision and then make that decision, <laughs> you know, don't just keep overthinking it, you know. So I think keeping it simple is really important. And I would like to do a follow up podcast with you. Um, I, I would really love to get into more about family and kids care with CBD as well. And so another thing I want to do for those of you listening, when you see me post about this podcast episode, if you have any questions from this episode or any questions you want us, you know, to follow up on, on another episode, please, please comment on the post you see on my, my social media. But in the meantime, I think we have a code to share love 10, right? So you guys can go to rootedapoth.com check out their company, everything that they're about, their products. And if you do want to try something, use code LOVE10, all lowercase, uh, for a discount. So you can try that. And if you do try it, give me some feedback. DM me. Let me know what you think about it. I really want to know what you think about this. So uh, we have some product on the way to us, and we're going to check that out. And so I'm going to talk more about my experience with Rooted Apothecary when we do our follow-up podcast. But if you want to know anything else about them, check it out in the show notes on the blog post or simply shoot them a message or me a comment or message, and we'd be happy to answer any questions or to help you out. So Dr. K, thank you. Thank you for this yes, incredible masterclass on, on C. CBD in our bodies. I really appreciate it. I learned so much today. I'm going to be digesting it. I'm sure I'm going to have some follow-up questions and I really appreciate you. Well, it's an honor to be here with you guys. Thank you for what you do. And um, I think we did send you out some goodies. We've got a, yeah. a, a tincture coming and some rollers. So we're excited to see how yeah, you like it and absolutely. how it works with your family. So we I, appreciate you guys. Yeah. They, I heard that you have a, a hormone roll roll on something for hormones and i just think ryan needs to send that to us in bulk because we have so many kids in in puberty right now <laughs> oh man i just shared a meme the other day about puberty oh gosh like where's the bulk option <laughs> we'll see what we can do but yeah yeah i love that just just or, or, or at least an auto ship right just right an auto auto, oh right now, now we're talking now we're talking now we need to have a business master class because <laughs> i think we could we could come up with some really cool ideas but all right well thank you so much and you guys thanks for listening until next time adios love ya